satisfied that we're going to get a uh, new ministerial complex that will complement even the bridge that will be on uh, that road, the, the two bridges. So that, uh, uh, it's a first leave and then uh, it's good for the country. So what we're going to do now is that all of the agency that are doing the same work, they'll be able to go in there so we can be going to one office to another office, they'll be right there. This is a good thing for us, and, and the reason uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that uh, all the projects that uh, are monitored and finished because the government continues. So that even though it started doing our uh, excellency, former president Ellen Johnson Salif, but my mandate is to continue the projects that are left undone, and then, and then also uh, create new projects. You know, for the benefit of our country. Mr. President, the military hospital, I'm sure, stands to be one of your legacy projects. A uh, few months from now, we're going to send by April, let's say six months from now, it might be completed in terms of roofing. Uh, what do you say to Liberians in terms of the effort made so far to reach where it is? Well, uh, 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 we just have to continue to listen. When, when you entrust a leader with a country to be developed, then you need to look up to the leader and help him to to develop the country. And I'm 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 I'm, I'm very satisfied and I'm impressed <coughs> because what we heard on Facebook, what we've seen around in the newspaper that since they talk about the military hospital, that nothing is on the ground, it's just uh, fallacies and what have you. So you can see that I'm I'm, I'm very happy that. Uh, you saw my expression. I was impressed that we're going almost 75 percent. So, as I said, it's it's less talking and action. You know, my my way of doing things. You know, and and the reason I follow those uh, 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 projects because I don't want to just give people something to do and then uh, uh, I don't see that uh, they're doing the work. That's why I keep going to them. Even the roads you see around. All the communities are connected today because I wake up in the morning, that's my dream. And for my dream to be realized, I have to wake up and go there and see. And my presence there 
who encourage those that are working to do to do better and, and they work faster. For his part, Chinese Ambassador Phil Jinjong vowed his country's commitment to continue its collaboration with Liberia in the area of infrastructure development. Here is the first year uh, that we are working together to implement the four, uh, the, the, the four character eight accents. So one uh, area is uh, for the uh, infrastructure uh, construction. So besides this uh, uh, minister complex building, and the next we will go to the airport to see the uh, new terminal. And also on your way to go to the airport, and you will go to the your priority project, the 14 hospital. And uh, I'm uh, very glad that uh, to uh, tell your excellency for extend some help for the 14 uh, hospital. Now we have the second team, uh, the technical team, are studying to make some help to the 14 hospitals uh, uh, construction and we will help you to build a uh, reference uh, uh, clinic uh, laboratory at the 14 hospital in the future. Meanwhile, Senate Pro Temporary Albert G and Speaker Buffalo Chambers termed the ongoing projects as a step well taken to promote national development in Liberia. So we went first to the ministerial complex that is proposed to house about uh, five agencies. The so agencies are housed in private uh, properties that pay high amount of rent. And uh, so agencies will be there to coordinate with other agencies to do the work of the Liberian people. I understand by April that building will, that complex will be ready for use. They will move to the military hospital. During the groundbreaking, I was not here. I was on the official duties away. And so it was my first time going there. You know, the place is off-road, so most Liberians don't have the opportunity to see it. So in the public sphere, there are news that are not even started. A very impressive structure, as you as you saw it. Uh, so I understand within uh, eight weeks maximum the roof will be there. It is uh, with fruition. Uh, so as you dedicated journalists who've come here uh, to be some uh, uh, I will call flashlights on the programs, I think you can see for yourself. This is typical visualization of the reality. So there's no way you can say that the airport is not growing. It's growing, and that is based on the magnanimity of our president. River G County Senator Komele Wise has pledged the Senate's support in passing the domestic violence bill. Senator Wise attributed several complex and unresolved issues surrounding the bill as factors for lingering in committee room. The River G County Senator spoke Wednesday at the Akowas Human Rest Day at a local hotel in Monrovia. I think we've been having difficulties to passing and concluding discussion on these issues. Because I think we are combining two things that if we separate, we'll find a way to deal with them easily. One, we do not need, in my view, to put domestic violence bill and ample traditional practices under one caption. I think if we deal with domestic violence, we will deal with it faster because many of us don't like it. I remember my father beating my mother. And I was about, I think I remember, I must have been like three, four years old. I still remember. And my brother, took a bottle, whatever it was that he had, when she was on this woman beating her, and she was young. This man took the bottle, they jumped, beat my mother and boom, push on his back, on my father's back. I didn't see them fight again. <laughs> Also speaking, ECOWAS Special Representative to Liberia, Ambassador Baba Tonde Ajisomo, acknowledged challenges facing girls and women in the sub-region. Uh, George Manuel President of the Republic of Liberia, 
and the government and people of Liberia as you join me to commemorate today, 16 January, as it was Human Rights Day, which corresponds with the date when the first elected female president in Africa, Her Excellency Madame Edith Johnson said it was sworn in as the 23rd president of Liberia on 16 January 2006. <laughs> the theme for this year 2019, she has life on the girl child within the Equus region. As you're all aware, the girl child is faced with numerous challenges, particularly the socio-cultural, political, and economic setbacks, which have made them vulnerable and exposed to different types of abuses. Equally, the girl child have been prevented from exploiting their inherent fundamental human rights which both their national constitutions and human rights protocols and conventions that this government provides for. It is against this background that Edward's Commission has chosen the international theme of promoting affirmative actions on the rights of the child girl of girl child education. Alongside Finance and Development Planning Minister Samuel Tue says Liberia is willing to collaborate with other West African countries, especially in implementing programs and projects funded by the European Union. Speaking when he accepted Liberia's presidency of the Network of National Authorizing Officers Support Union in West Africa of the European Development Fund, Minister Tue said the we are led government has instituted several reforms in the road sector in an apparent appeal for more EU support to road development in Liberia. Under Liberia's leadership of the road fair, we will work closely with our sister countries and with the European Union to stretch the impact of EDF resources in member countries through stronger collaboration and technical meetings. Let me now recognize the European Union as a critical partner in West Africa. The EU is at the center of the major transformation taking place in West Africa in a whole host of spheres, especially transformation in the infrastructure space. My Ambassador, please convey to the European Union the profound gratitude of West African governments for the enormous support the EU continues to provide to several countries. As we prepare for the 11th EDF, Madam Ambassador, we look forward to more support and to using EDF resources more effectively and efficiently. At the same time, EU Ambassador Helen Cave pledged the European bloc support to Liberia and other ECOWAS countries. The EU will support the PROPOR agenda, which is a new agenda of President uh, George Maliwia. Since the signature of the Lomé Convention and the Cotonou Agreement, the role played in all your countries by the national authorizing officer and also the regional authorizing officer is very important in the context of our cooperation with the host ACP country. By consequence, the NAO support unit is instrumental in the success of our cooperation and is strategically linked to the NAO, to the delegation, but also to all the line ministries. It is very important also to connect the national EDF program in the region with the regional project from ECOWAS, but also for some of you with the YMU, the UMEMOA, and also further on the continental uh, efforts. Our aid can be more effective if a clear link and complementarity can be made between these different levels, national, Continental. Meanwhile, the outgoing president of Rock Fed says the meeting is intended for ECOWAS countries to discuss issues confronting bloc in general and individual states in particular. Here now is Ansumana Tuare. The importance of the ninth Rock Fed uh, cannot be overemphasized considering the development challenges that ECOWAS countries are faced with, such as terrorism, as um, highlighted by Honorable Ambassador um, Kabe, uh, just relating to Nairobi yesterday, um, as well as climate change, 
migration, poverty, and food insecurity, amongst others. These challenges are the crux of our engagement with the European Union. Therefore, this meeting provides us with an opportunity to discuss these issues mainly from the perspective of the various national and regional indicative programs. Well, if you have just joined us, this is a reminder that you are watching Erin TV News Live, a 30 minute presentation of major news, various interviews, background reports, and analysis shifting the destiny of Liberia, Africa, and our global village. It's Thursday, January 17, 2019. My name is Zokwe Ibes Lokonen, anchoring this edition of the program Erin TV News Live. Let's recap our major stories. President George Manawiya decides to talk less and add more on Liberia's infrastructure development. Senate Pro Tem Abbott Che says his tour along with the Liberian leader, George Wea, has given him a clear picture of the status of the 14th military hospital along the Rabat's Hughes Highway. And of the home front, leaders from 10 Muslim organizations in Kenya have condemned Tuesday's attack at the District 2 Hotel in the Riverside area in the capital, Nairobi. Ellen TV News Live takes a short break to be back with more developments. Welcome back to Erin TV News Live. We continue with the program. The head of the Liberia National Commission on Small Arms, Marvin Sako, has named decentralization and community engagement as key focus of the commission in 2019. He said education, educating the people about the workings of the commission, including taking the activities of the commission to Liberians will go a long way in creating the necessary awareness and helping to improve the security sector. So, uh, what we try to do, we try to do different things because uh, we try to do more awareness. Uh, it's a community that I've been to where it comes to small arms. People actually don't know the you know, working small arms. So, what we try to do, we try to make sure that we make small arms uh, more visible when we do more awareness. So, in doing that, we want to work very closely with the head of the security institution to make sure that uh, we're working very closely in you know, combating for the situation of small arms in this country. In doing that, we are going to make sure we do things that we're in the compound you know, where we want to have those technical guys that work with the institution uh, on uh, the, the inspection of different armories, the margin of the weapons. We want, we want to make sure that they are seconded to small arms headquarters where we we'll have close coordination with that institution and that small arms. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, says it is worrisome the increase in encroachment of wetlands by some Liberians. Nathaniel Blama, executive director of the EPA, calls on the people of Liberia to desist from such practice for their own environmental safety. He spoke in an interview with this station Wednesday. A lot of climate change. People keep building in waterways and, 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 and floor plains and wetlands, we're going to have a series of flooding around the city during the rainy season again. You know, we set up a task force, we want to reach out to ensure that we police the wetland. One of the things we did when we got in, we recruited some young men and we deploy along the wetlands, but they're not sufficient. We wouldn't be able to deploy 20 persons. The wetlands that we got around Morovia, they're very big. You know, we need to deploy people more around, but besides that, we need to be able to enforce the law. Unfortunately, we, we, we are lacking on logistics on doing that. And people keep building in the wetlands, people keep cutting down the mango. You know, people think that, um, I always say this in a, in a little bit sense. Some of us Christians, the Bible says it's foolish to build your house in the water. Because the rain comes, the flood will go up. And the water, the water will wash your house away. 
The best place to build a house is on a solid ground, on the rock. But people, poor men cannot build in wetland. Wetland are not for poor people to build. At the same time, the EPA boss calls for the urgent attention of waste issues, which has also been a serious challenge for the sector. He found that people not to dispose of their waste in drainages, which he noted, may cause many problems for them in the future. The waste issue needs actual serious attention. Our beaches are later with waste. People take um, hospital waste, household waste, when they cannot find a place to dump them, they take them to the beaches and dump them, some even bury them. And then the water comes and wash and expose them. That's a serious problem. And people dump their waste in drainages and pluck drainages and, you know, in, 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 in sewage system and what have you. Um, the issue of waste, everybody around Monrovia is complaining about waste. Um, we're working now, we're calling a meeting. Uh, today as I speak, I have a meeting with the Library Marketing Association and we'll be discussing the issue of waste. I have a meeting, we're organizing a meeting with all of the mayors around Monrovia and we'll be talking about the mayors and commissioners. Mm. And we'll be talking about how to work with them in organizing to, to, to deal with the issue of waste. The president of the Workers' Union of the Liberia Broadcasting System, Moses Dobo, has expressed serious concern over the shutdown of some outstations of the ELBC in some parts of the country. Mr. Dobo calls on national government to see the need to address the issue so that the people in rural Liberia can have access to basic information about their country. You wouldn't believe it that all of our broadcasts we are doing here is on the Morovia based broadcasts. That means the people in Lofa, the people in Nimba, the people in Grand Jide, Maryland, Sino, all of those areas, they are not getting us. So we have come to call on the government to help restore those outstations. We cannot be a national station and become a Morovia based station. So we want the government to take this very seriously. It is a very serious appeal. As employees of this institution, we who are in the leadership, we can sit here and the outstations of the national broadcasters or the broadcaster is off or are off. So we are calling on the government to take this issue seriously. Let's take for instance, we just came from the county meeting. All of those broadcasts we were doing were just for Morovia. These counties were represented by their various teams who came from all over. And I'm sure their citizens, the citizens of those areas wanted to know what their uh, teams were doing here on a daily basis. That was not possible. And that is something that really it should not be. I'm sure the president and his government, they are trying very hard to restore things. But these are priority things that uh, I think the government need to take very seriously. And we are calling on the finance minister. These are the advisors to the president if it comes to financial spendings. The minister of state for presidential affairs to take this issue very seriously. This speaker. A resident of the police academy community, Christopher Suarez, has embarked on a road project to connect other parts of the community. The self-initiative road project, when completed, will enhance community development for residents of the area. Mr. Suarez explains more in an interview to the station Wednesday. The intent of this project is mainly geared towards establishing a good road network for our community dwellers and also to enhance the free flow of traffic leading to the, to the clinic that I've established. But rightly as I said, it's been single-handedly done. Only very few hands that have decided to come around with labor force, that I could say. But uh, the intents of it financially has been done single-handedly. I could put it this way. 90-95% is been done by me in financial cost. And the rest is being supported by com few community dwellers. If you care, I can name very few of them, like Vasse, Sally. He did well. The bishop in the community did well. 
Meanwhile, some of the community dwellers, the Boronimle and Jones Sandy, lauded Christopher Swari for the initiative. Oh, Aloka, he has a great help to me. A very great help to me. Why? Because, I mean, when it is raining, the floor of the rain, it can't be easy. Sometimes I hardly get up. I am a children and grandchildren. It can be easy, even for the students thing, that can pass this Mother. way to go to school. It can be an easy thing for them. People, people they say when they're going to work, no way for them to pass. Sometimes they will take off their shoes, roll their trousers, and throw one another and cross the water. It can be an easy thing for them to release this time. So I tell God, thank you. It is a great help to me and also to the people there that can be going to work and the students there, the little ones. Without this road con uh, construction before, like when the rain fall, it will be flooding all in here. So I believe based on this road, this road will open because they're trying to open a cover where they'll be able to control it, the flood, so that it can be able to maybe pass at one area and then get to the other bigger end. So I believe if this road open, you'll be able to save us a lot from the flood. Youth and Sports Minister Zyoga Wilson says several federations in the country risk termination from government subsidies due to the failure of them to execute impactful sporting activities over the period. He said it is sad for national government to spend money on sports like Basako and Kino Rally and many others without tangible results. He spoke in an interview with this station recently. Most of our federations, yes, they are receiving subsidy from government. It may not be enough, but they themselves are not doing nothing much that's impactful. Because even if you don't, what I think we believe is appropriate to do as a federation, even if you don't have a league nationally, but your presence should be felt in the various schools. Do something. Some of them don't do anything. They barely have an office. But yet they still are receiving the subsidy for the government. So we're going to look at our report thoroughly and we'll be calling them to let them our expectation because in order for the improvement of sport, you just can be receiving, even if the funds are in receiving of government. That thousand bucks can be put somewhere else that can be beneficial and benefit, that benefit young people, you know what I'm saying? But you cannot be saying I'm a sporting federation. But even in the schools, you have no presence there. And that yes, there. In the, so we have plans to, because we have an issue of sports, right? They're football. And that is why you see a renovated the gym there. The senior, meanwhile, the senior team of Liberia is expected to leave the country next month for an intensive training and text matches session in Morocco. According to UN Sports Minister Zilga Wilson, the move is to show how serious the government is ahead of the national team Crucial Nations Cup qualifier in a Democratic Republic of Congo in March. Minister Wilson spoke to reporters recently about the development. Training will have an opportunity to play a series of test matches as well, which we need. And you know, Morocco has a very good football program, uh, they have a very competitive league, and so as much games our local player can play while in training will be a good thing for the for, for the national team. So. Well, let's now bring you our foreign development. Kenyan police, that's Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta says a siege by suspected militants in Nairobi is over and all the attackers have been eliminated. Gunmen attacked the compound in the Westlands district of Kenya's capital recently, killing at least 14 people. Officials originally announced the end of the siege hours after it began, but gunfire and explosions were heard again early on. Wednesday, a Somalia-based militant group Al-Shabaab said it was behind the attack. In a television address to the nation, President Kenyatta said people have been killed and 700 others were safely evacuated from the complex.
but the BBC says the Kenyan Red Cross has put the number dead at 24. The U.S. State Department said a U.S. citizen is among the dead with a British citizen also feared dead. Meanwhile, the chairman of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahamat, has condemned Tuesday's attack on the Ducet D2 hotel in Nairobi. Well, that does it from the foreign scene. Let's now recap major stories we have followed on the program this morning. President George Manawia decides to talk less and act more on Liberia's infrastructure development. Senate Pro Tem Abbott Chi says his tour along with the Liberian leader George Weir has given him a clear picture of the status of the 14 military hospital along the Rabas International Field Highway. And away from Liberia, leaders from 10 Muslim organizations in Kenya have condemned Tuesday's attack at a Ducid D2 hospital that's hotel in Riverside area in the capital, Nairobi. Well, this is how we come to the end of the program, Ellen TV News Live. Many thanks to you all for your viewing role. Many thanks to all of our reporters, correspondents, technicians, specials, and editors for making this package a success. Ellen TV News Live is a production of the television department of the Liberia Broadcasting System. This program comes on every Monday to Friday with the early edition at 10 to 10.30 in the morning and the late edition at 8 to 8.30 in the evening. On behalf of the entire television crew of the Liberia Broadcasting System, my name is Zokwe Beslo Konen. I have been anchoring this edition. Have a good day. Bye-bye for now.